Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to show you how to configure OSPF authentication. Now this is purely optional. You do not have to do this. However, it is recommended you do use authentication on your network because we want to prevent a rogue router or an unauthorized device from becoming neighbors with our network and injecting bad link state information into the databases of all our routers. Once that happens, this rogue device could really bring down our network with bad information. So we want to prevent that. And quite simply, when enabled, each OSPF message is going to use authentication with every neighbor. Okay? So we're going to begin by looking at the no authentication approach. And quite simply, that's the default behavior when you enable OSPF. The first real authentication approach does enable authentication, but it uses clear text passwords. So anyone on the network could intercept that traffic find out the passwords, and then go ahead and cause trouble. So it's a good step, but it's not a great step towards protecting your network. The third and best option is using authentication, but this time we're going to use it with the MD5 hash, and that way that password is protected from anybody who might snoop some of that traffic. Now with authentication, we can enable it on a per interface basis or a per OSPF area basis. The overall approach to enabling authentication is pretty simple. There are two steps. The first thing you need to do is enable authentication. The second step is to create the passwords. So whether you're going to do this on a per interface basis or for an entire OSPF area, you still follow these two steps. So keep those in mind when you're approaching your configuration tasks. A quick look at our lab setup. Routers A and B are connected via a serial link and we're going to jump on router A and enable OSPF authentication. This is already configured on router B, so if we do it properly, the two routers should become neighbors and exchange OSPF messages. Now keep in mind, if a router is using authentication and another router is not using authentication, then they will not become neighbors. So both routers need to use it if you want them to become neighbors. Neighbors, And obviously, if they're both using authentication, they have to use the same passwords. If they are different, the routers will not become neighbors. So keep that in mind if you are presented with a troubleshooting scenario and you need to figure out why the routers are not becoming neighbors, always confirm the authentication configurations. Okay, we're on router A, and we're going to set up authentication using the message digest 5, because if we use the clear text, in, in some ways it's not even worth it, because that password, like I mentioned, can be intercepted. Okay, so we'll start off with the interface approach, and you can see we don't have any neighbors right now because router B is using authentication and we're not, so we can't become a neighbor yet. Serial 000 is connected to router B and the first thing we do is enable authentication and we're using message digest and that is the first step in enabling authentication. So now it's enabled but it doesn't have a password. So after that command the next one to create the password is the IP OSPF message digest key and there are two parameters we need to enter. The first one is a key value. You can just use one. And then we have to specify the password after that. So this password is going to be identified with this key number. So you can create many different keys with different passwords associated to it. Um, so perhaps you want to have one interface using one password and a different interface using a different password. You have some options here. Here, we just go ahead and enter our password. I'm going to use something simple like Cisco, but you should use a much more complicated password on your network. And that's it. Those are the two configuration steps needed for the interface approach. Now, if we take a look at the interface itself, show IP OSPF interface serial 000, You can see at the bottom here, it tells us that message digest authentication is enabled and it's telling us the key ID that we're using. So now, if we take a look at our neighbors, you can see we do have an adjacency with router B. 
Okay. Okay, this time we're going to enable authentication for an entire area. So I've wiped out the configurations we just made. And this time we have to go into the router OSPF process configuration area first. So we're using process one. And once we're in that configuration space, the command we want to issue is the area, and then we choose our area ID. For us, it'll be area zero. And then we have to choose authentication. Now, if we were to hit enter now, that would just enable the clear text authentication. Since again, it's really worth it to use the message digest, the parameter after that is just message digest. After you enter that, now, Every interface which is in area zero is enabled for, for authentication using Message Digest. So we've just completed step one for every interface in that area, which is pretty helpful. However, you still have to jump into each interface to configure the password. So you still have that granularity, that control over changing the passwords uh, on different interfaces. So in this case, we would have to go back into serial zero 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 and configure the IP OSPF message digest key. We'll use one again, MD5 and the password Cisco. The information on the interface is going to look the same as well. Here you can see again at the bottom message digest authentication is enabled and the key number that we're using. So now if we take a look at our neighbors, we have a neighbor, it is router B. Okay? Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. The default configuration for OSPF is not to use authentication. You can enter a command if you wanted to in order to set no authentication, uh, and that would be IP OSPF authentication null. Now, if you want to use clear text authentication, the command to enable it is IP OSPF authentication. And then to actually create the password, IP OSPF authentication key, and then the value. Now, the ones we showed you, we are using the MD5 authentication. And so this is how we enable it. IP OSPF authentication message digest. And then in order to create the password, it's actually a key and a password value. IP OSPF message digest key and then the MD5 value. So this is the per interface approach. For the entire area, we could enable the clear text using the area, the area number, and then the authentication parameter. Or if we want to use message digest, we just tack on the message digest parameter at the end there. Okay, so remember, this only enables authentication for an entire area. Like I mentioned, you still have to go into each interface to actually uh, create the password that will be used. Okay, so that's it. That is configuring OSPF authentication. Thanks for watching.